Welcome back, everyone. As a reminder, the LCS Plus Summer Playoffs will be continuing with the semi-finals on Friday as Fnatic will be taking on Rockout and, of course, Alliance versus SK Gaming. That's tomorrow, guys, right here, right? Not quite now. No. <laughs> the winners will head to the finals. They're going to be on Sunday in the third and fourth place playoff will be on Saturday, which is probably yes. just as important. Well, it's more important, maybe. Who knows? Of course, depends if you're a team involved. So we're about to get closer to deciding who will be going to the promotion tournament. We spoke to the members of H2K, Unicorns of Love, and SK Gaming Prime to see what they think of their competition. And they're certainly not lacking any confidence. The promotion and relegation is are going to be a really good tournament. The promotion and relegation is uh, the bottom LCS teams against the top challenger teams. And whoever uh, wins gets into the LCS. Obviously, they got a lot of experience compared to us, but skill-wise, I think we are going up and they are possibly going down in skill. So we have a lot to learn and they might fall too. I feel like against Gambit, we have really good chances, like we scrimmed them before and we have usually really good results. They're actually looking strong now. Like, they looked weak and now they're combat and really looking really strong. They seem to be really confident to uh, stay in the LCS and not, to not get relegated. I think we can probably win against them. I'm pretty, pretty sure we can win against them. Gambit and Copenhagen Wolves both are pretty equal, but I think Copenhagen Wolves is a bit weaker at the moment. Their lanes, and compared to the others and their teamwork, is not that good. They're definitely the weakest team in the relegation. Copenhagen Wolves is going to have a hard time because they just swapped jungler again. Every player on our team is at least even, if not better than, their uh, players and our shot calling and decision making is probably on a better level. I would rather play uh, Millennium. We have scrimmed them, so and we won every scrim, so we're not like afraid to go against Millennium. Whoever chooses us, you're gonna have problems with us. We are looking so strong. Yeah, like after all, it's their career at stake, so they have a lot to lose and we have a lot to gain. I don't really think the sixth team gonna pick us up because I think we look really strong. If they did, then it was the wrong decision. Some very, very big <laughs> words coming out of the challenger teams. I hope they realize that scrims actually mean nothing yeah. in terms of results. Especially because Millennium is a team who lose like every single scrim yeah. they play. Because they just try something weird. Yeah, always try weird mm. stuff and uh, it's good to hear them being confident. Of course. But uh, they have to remember they've been playing in the challenger scene and it is different playing in the LCS. So and they it's should, not just stepping in. They should also remember not a single challenger team got in last time. True. Used to, while you know, they come around, everyone was hyping up H2K and NIP at the time. Yeah. Neither of them got in. We'll see how it works out. That's of course coming very soon. So on to this match. It is game two. Millennium, will they adjust anything? They're going to be on the blue side this time around. Super Hawk crew on the red. Will that help them out in his pick and ban phase? We're about to get in the way. Well, maybe we're going to see Millennium get a possible Maokai pick. Then you don't actually have to ban the Kassadin for either of the teams. So it sh should just mean like perma Maokai ban actually in all these games because he's going to be the new Kassadin in terms of these two teams. And I really like the fact Oriana's been banned now. Yes, so Mundo, Yasuo and Oriana banned out by Millennium. Quick and fast as well. Super Hawk crew. Banning out Aurelia, Maokai once again, and Zillion. So, the cow, first picked. This time around, Kevin gets his hands on it. I remember Mima, of course. Was it 100% kill participation? Maybe not in the very end. He did die and Silver picked up a kill, but up until the very last team fight, he had been part of every single kill. He made it very hard for Super, oh, sorry, for Millennium to actually team fight because Crescent could never really join the fight due to Kevin always being in the way on the, on the cow. They're now going to be locked in most likely for Kevin in the top lane. We did see Jerry play Alistar twice in this quarterfinal against SK Gaming. Didn't actually work for him, so uh, would expect it to be the cow in the top lane. Oh, well, Tristana get picked up once again for Mr. Alas. Will he go for the Cogmore? What does he feel is better for him? Of course, every choice of support as well. Could that yeah. be their picks? Will they even look towards the mid lane? I mean, Morgana is open now if they want to lock her in. She's been their go-to support mm -hmm. pretty much all the teams. Elise open as well if they want to do the same combo as before. It is going to be the same. Okay, so, so far the same. They can't obviously get Alistair. <laughs> no, sadly, he's gone. But it's somewhat the same here. Oriana, of course, is being banned away now by Millennium, and I like it because while Selfie didn't have the best laning face on it, 
it was very, very strong in the team fights. It made it, again, very hard for the pick comms from Millennium to actually kill people due to the shield and utilities she brings. So these pick commands clearly were focused out of the top lane. You know, obviously they banned Mundo, that's Mima's sort of fallback champion. They knew that Ma Super Hot Crew would have banned Maokai. They knew that had to happen, otherwise they'd have first picked it straight away. Yeah. So this is clearly gambling on Kevin on that top lane of Cow. And that's if it's a top lane. Could be J. Reed, could be J. Reed. But that's gambling on basically him dominating that lane, which is not exactly something that happens that often. No, definitely not. Otherwise, you do have a lot of team fight potential on, on the other star, which is one of the reasons uh, he is so strong. And I actually do hope we're going to see a Zac being logged in because, in my opinion, he could work really well against Alistar. Well, Lee Sin and Corky were, of course, locked in. Creaton has him insane stats on Corky from the actual LCS, the normal summer split. But playoffs didn't quite go the way he hoped. There is going to be a switch. Come Are they going to go with Lock that? Are they going to go with that Cassidy? in? Impaler worked well on Elise. Of course, that fit the comp last time around. It's going to do the same here. I mean, you already have the Morgana. You can do the same combination, at least Morgana. Create some picks. You have the disengage potential. And Zach here in the top lane keeps... Come on, lock him in. Just lock it in. The reason he's so good against Alistar, in my opinion, is he can perma-push the lane. He will also out-sustain with his own blobs here, which means Alistar should never be able to actually touch him in the lane. You're tanky enough to Wasn't avoid confident lock -in, doing that, anything. That didn't look a confident no, moment to me. It did take a long time here. Maybe they wanted to actually last pick it and see what what we were going to see, but uh, they want to actually have what we were going to see. Maybe okay. they wanted to wait and see if it was actually Alistar top lane. Are we going to see Jerry Warwick? <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Warwick. It did work in the game against Alliance. He was actually the MVP for Millennium. But still, Zach here. The reason Super Crew were like, okay, should we pick it or not? Is because they didn't know if Alistar was going to be supported top lane and it was picked against Alistar. Because you can simply just push him down the lane. From pretty much minute one to the end of the game, you can just keep pushing against him. You have a lot of wave clear. Get it down to the tower. He should never be able to actually kill you, which make Zach a very strong pick. And also, we know how tanky and annoying he can be in these team fights. If Zach gets a lot of farm early on, he can just jump into the back line and blop around and provide a lot of CC and be very, very hard to kill. So I like it against Alistar. You can push the lane in a bit like Lulu could against Alistar. I wonder though if Millennium actually want to swap around it. So, Cassidy picked up for Kerb. Let's see if it's successful this time around. But more importantly for me, Leona for J. Ree, a champion that he is very good on. Yeah, and very known for because he's always the guy who was like the main engage for Millennium in these pick comps. And Kassadin, second time only we see Kerr play Kassadin. Millennium used to be the team to always ban Kassadin, no matter if they were on red or blue side. Now they do have him locked in. So really looking to try and get past, at least for Kerb, the mid game point. And that's where the Corky pick is really good for Kresen because he's going to be very strong in the mid game. Same goes for the Alistar. And then you have the late game potential of a Kassadin who can always completely snowball out, snowball out of control. So like in that case, the setup for Millennium here. But still, they give all Morgana Elise, one of my favorite combinations, two Super Hot Crew. They give, once again, a hyper carry to Mr. Rallis. We saw him play it well in the last game. We saw Millennium not being able to kill him in the team fights. And now in this case, if, especially if it's going to be a Rise being locked in. Yes, you have Kassadin for late game, but you are still going to be so outscaled out by Super Hot Crew at this point. Yes, Millennium have to get early kills, have to get Curb going like they did on the Talon, have to do it for the Kassadin, and this time around he should jump in and die. And it has been the standard counter, I think, for the Kassadins these days. Apart from the Zed, of course, we saw the yeah. Rue just pull out earlier on. But uh, Rise tends to be that fullback champion against Kassadins in mid. And at the same time, you now have Rune Prison and then double skill shot CC. So whoever gets Rune Prison by the Rise will get followed up with more CC and opens up for Mr. Riley to just kill the target. So it's also going to mean Curb has to build an early hourglass if he wants to play aggressive in teamfights. Otherwise, he's going to jump in, get CC'd and just die instantly. A bit like he did on the Talon here. So once again, Millennium, they love this pick potential they can do here with the Leona, with the Kassadin, with the Corky. They do have some mid-game power. But they have to get the kills in mid game. They have to get the kills early mid game. If they do fall behind, Super Crew will super outscale them. Well, game two about to get underway in just a moment. Millennium trailing behind. As JB just said to you, I saw it the ch internal chat there. Well, we're behind just like we were last year with True. you. True. He did also say incoming blitz. <laughs> incoming blitz. He lied, and then he actually said. We're going to try not to be caught out of position now. That would, which that would probably be, is a good idea. Would be a very good idea. Didn't work out too well for them last time. 
Well, they are the ones that are going to be looking for picks, of course, with the casting in there, with the Lee Sin in there. More importantly, we want to see Alistair versus Zach. Or will they switch it to a 2v1? Could be 2v1 simply to avoid the lane here. Mm. Unless uh, Kevin feels like he can actually handle Mime on the Zach. I don't know how it's going to be in the matchup. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are now finally getting onto the rift. Millennium starting out as the blue side for the first time in this best of five series up against Super Hot Crew. Well, one game to the good. Nothing insane coming out from level one items. Everybody remembering to buy <laughs> their uh, <laughs> trinkets. Oh. So it was a bonus. So yeah, again, Zach in top lane, as I said, in champ select. I've seen it before, it should be very strong against Alistar because you just constantly push him into his own tower. He can never really touch you because you have so much sustain and you are so tanky. So really looking forward to see what Mama can do on it. Kerb decided to go with uh, without a teleport on Kassadin here, so they don't want the double uh, global pressure they could do, which we often see on a Kassadin. Especially also because then Mima could be split pushing and Kerb could be joining in. They can pick up a kill and then still react if four members from Super Crew is going to start a Baron but decided not to run a teleport. Basically just wants to have some more early pressure and want to be able to, to hopefully for him, pick up some kills. So, instant movement. The moment they saw Leo uh, Morgana Kasing in that river, placing that ward, you see Millennium completely shuffling position. Creates on back into base. Yep. They are going to head straight towards that top lane with Jerry. Smart enough here, avoiding the one-on-one -on -one for Kevin. And now he can actually run around with Codnex, and Alistar is one of the best top laners and best supports as well. Add actually early ganks, of course, get his level 2 point, and you have so much gank potential. Slap only Sin on his back as well, and you have two members running into a lane, and you can just shut down whatever target you actually want too early. So they do have a very scary ganking squad between Codnex and Kevin now. And if they want to go towards this mid lane to try and shut down Selfie, we have seen it before where teams look to shut down, him, you know, shut down him early on because he's a player where all the teams always say, if we get a few kills on him early, he will tilt and he won't be able to communicate with the team, he won't be able to perform well enough if he dies a few times early. So we could see Codnex and Kevin invest a lot of time on trying to kill him in this mid lane and also get Kerb ahead. Well, it looks like we're going to get the 4 out down the bottom, of course, in reaction to Millennium doing the exact same thing in the top half quickly. Reacting, changing position, moving down south. We'll see whether they get themselves across. There is no wards to give them vision, so should be able to just head straight on across and start things standard. So 4-0 starts for both these teams. Who does that benefit? Well, for now, seeing as they didn't want Kevin against Mimo and the Zac, it should be in favor of Millennium. But you can't really say anything this early on because both the dual lanes, I mean, Corky is a strong laner. Leona, however, is a bit of a weak one, especially against the Morgana with the Black Shield. There's room to outplay, there always is. We always see it where you can go in on one target, bait out the Black Shield, then switch target and stun the, the other one, the other AD carry if it is, if he's standing next to Morgana. But uh, definitely, in my opinion, in favor of Millennium that they get the lane swap here. Also to make sure Kresna can actually farm on Corky, where sometimes you do see Leona's being shut down early and then just forced to stand on the tower and can't really assist the and of team. Of course, the, the fallout of the 4-0 is also the fact that these two mid laners get themselves some free time to get those levels going, which I think Kerb will be quite thankful for, but you can see Selfie trying to return that damage, and but he's not Kevin. really penetrating the shield. No, but look at Kevin here. Level 2 cow. He wants to help Kerb here. Connex is staying in the jungle to farm, and Selfie's very, Ooh, very far up the lane. He's protecting a dragon. Look at this. Super hot crew going for dragon. Selfie's going to try and head away from this one. He has got the team nearby. They're going to ward out. He does walk away. Doesn't burn the flash. And it's an early dragon for super hot crew. That is the benefit of having all of your members in the bottom lane. Definitely is the benefit and always what you have to do. Or at least start the dragon up here and force your team to wreck. I would have loved just to see Kevin and Connex be Ooh. more aggressive around the dragon though. Oh, Kevin. Up and Kevin now in trouble. Out of position there. We're not going to see any flashes coming out. I don't think it's needed. They will manage to pressure him away. Super Hawk crew not burning too much for that. So while again the lane swap was started by Millennium, I'm not sure why they didn't actually invest any of their members to stop this dragon, which happens pretty much every lane swap we do have. Early on, Jerry was sitting up in the top lane together with Creaton in a 2v0. Mimo just teleported to the lane now. He could have been around the dragon. Codnex and Kevin as well was wa walking around in the jungle or around the mid lane. They should have been in position to stop the dragon, because that's the thing. You can start the early dragon, but you take a lot of damage from it. So you have to stop it if three, two or three members walk down towards you. 
Kassing, though, going towards Kerb. He does have back up from Kodmax. Kassing, I'm not too sure whether he was ever planning on landing a dart binding because there was a stack of minions that Kerb was stood on top of. He's still continuing to keep his presence known, along with Impaler. Just off in the river, they're going to come back up again once again. Can they land the two skill shots? Dark Binding does not land. Impaler repels, so he can't switch across quick enough to cocoon out. So, flash burn from Kerb. That's enough done. Yeah, and he's only level four, so it's going to be a while before he gets his level six and his own little jump. Which means if Subaku wants to go for a second gank now, they should be able to lock him down and potentially pick up the first blood and make him fall behind. I mean, we saw earlier today what happens when a Kassadin actually do fall behind. He's not going to be able to offer a lot before he picks up a lot of farm. He doesn't bring a lot of wave clear, so he has to find a safe lane to sit in and farm. Down his bottom lane, Mr. Alice once again pushing in a massive wave to the tower. Kevin is there, he's only level 3 and Kassing has rejoined the lane. So might be able to push him away and at least deny him some farm. He should be able to pick up uh, the experience. Let's see what he does. Kratos holds the lane so scared, yeah. he's in really the top. He's not got any vision, does put the ward down fine. Kassing is there. Mimer, of course, launching himself across. Let's give up on sticking around the top, so it will be a five man, will it? You're going to see four members. Self is coming down, as is Cornex and Jay Ree. So four on three so far. Oh, Jay Ree out of position. Mimer actually gets headbutted into him, and Jay Ree will not be too thankful for that one. He's going to go oh. down. Now, Pulverize comes out from Kevin. Bit of a mistake there by Millennium. Yeah, so. That was a bit of a weird play by Kevin. Actually ended up costing them the first blood now. So, again, this lane swap has gone horribly wrong for Millennium. They gave up a dragon. Even though they had members, they could have moved down to try and stop it. And now also gave up the first blood with Subaku sending four members down to this bottom lane. And Kevin, by mistake, of course, knocking was it Mimer into the face of uh, Jerry and end up actually killing him. So not a good start for Millennium in this lane swap. Two members to defend, Jerry's gonna join, rejoin from base. Four members from Super Aqua, over. They might look good. Oh, Dart binding on Cornex. He's gonna be the target, he'll go down. Remember, the cocoon was not used, I don't think. And that last time, Kevin trying to heal out Jerry. Medium wave will get cleared. There's a wave coming in towards the bottom as well. Selfie now caught out. Mr. Rala's going aggressive, uh, sorry. Kirk going aggressive on it. There's the cocoon, there's the Dart binding. Kevin the focus, pulverized lands. Kasing has to flash out, but that will be Kevin going down. There was a lot of tower hits. The Ignite could not be enough to take down Mr. Rala's. They will eventually get this tower down and the two kills. And Super who just have such a strong dive comp with these four members here. Kasing was actually tanking the tower. But just remember, at least can repel up in the air, reset the tower aggro, switch it over to someone else. And of course, Mimer with his passive as well. Oh, Ignite goes down. He fancies this one, but he has to flash away. Selfie gets out clean. But that will cost him a couple of waves of minions. So some actually mid lane curb doing good. Might actually fancy this one. No flash, however. A riff walk on Selfie towards him. Just a sim to recall. simple RQ combo would, would take him down. And so if you're well aware of that one, we'll finally get back to base. So all this action now in this bottom lane here. A lot of kills picked up by Superhawk crew. Mima got one, got a few assists as well. He's now going to return him to this top lane and get the one-on-one -on -one lanes. But Kevin, or actually both top lanes, are only level four at this point. It's just uh, the fact that Mima has a few kills picked up and definitely an item advantage early on here. Making it now even harder for Kevin to actually poke him down with the early magic resist. Causing problems for him, that's for sure. See where that Ruby Crystal goes, whether it's going to go into a Rod of Ages or whether it will go towards that Phage. We'll see. Keep our eyes on it simply right now. He just needs it for the hit points because Mima is a little fearful in that top lane, honestly. He's going towards Magic Resist early on. Spectral Cow in there as well. Mid lane, Selfie. While he did get bullied out and forced back, did get the tier and the Catalyst completed. So he's going to start stacking out. That's the. Standard rise builds, how you start off everything. Kerb's gonna come straight in, put some burst down in his face, slowly chip away at Kerb's hit point to himself, comes back with a catalyst. Hasn't gone for the rod, uh, for the um, tier, instead of going towards the rod of the ages. Okay, so rod of ages. Well, again, we don't actually see tier too often from Castings anymore. Rod of ages seems to be the go-to one. Can it be a little bit too slow here? We have to see what Kerb wants to build after the rod of ages, of course. But up in his top lane now here, even Better for Mimer is the fact he's against double AP, so he can actually build Spirit Visage as the first item. A bit like a Dr. Mundo, where it works really well because you have all the sustain already, making it close to impossible for Kevin to even touch him. And at the same time, you don't see any healing reduction from top laners anymore. So, Zach, once again, 
gets a small benefit. And Alistar will pretty much always run teleport. Meaning, Mama can just run around this lane here and keep pushing it down to the tower, force Kevin to stay under the tower. If Kevin ever TPs away from this lane, his tower will most likely end up going down. Mr. Rales returns the lane. He gets himself that sheen early on, headed towards the Trinity Force. Trinity Force also being completed or built by Kraton, I should say. We'll see who gets the edge on that one. Kraton, of course, inactive in all that fighting. He was up in the top lane, getting that farm as well. He's got that big advantage in farm, but of course, a kill and two assists. Selfie caught out in position. Impaler's He's here. He's roaming a little bit. Impaler comes around the side. Cocoon on towards Carnex. Kick Selfie away. Selfie may well go down here. Teleport comes out. Kirk, well, he's not going out of this one, whichever way he goes. But Kevin teleports in. Pulverized on towards Impaler. He's forced in there. Mimer joins the fight. He's only on half the hit points. He will get left bounce off. Kevin's going to get caught around. Pulverized was used. Kirk, oh, will not escape this one. Nice, nice. Mr. Rales gets him down. Kevin's ultimate's about to wear off. He's got about two seconds left. There he goes. Creator Dodges out of here, but will get caught the slow, force the flash away, and the super hot crew come out and advantage two to one. And if they can take the dragon, it's a bonus. Well, let's see. Creighton is still around, Kevin as well, but Kevin is out of mana, he has no ulti. Creighton is trying to steal it with the rocket, it didn't actually work here. This all started with Selfie actually walking by a ward from Millennium and then waiting in a bush, so they knew he was there, and then Codnex and Selfie just wanted to curb, just wanted to jump in. Notice here, he walked past the ward, so he's actually baiting it out now. Probably not on purpose, but still it worked because Impaler was nearby. He joined in, instantly the burst down Impaler. Uh, sorry, burst down uh, Codnex is going really well with these names here. And then the whole fight breaks out. Subaru, however, already has the advantage. Curb is out of mana at this point. Kevin is out of mana after he pops his ult. The very last snipe gets a kill. Impaler on this, at the moment here is very, very low, but he got out of the fight. And of course, Mimer could just take all the damage. He had his passive. Come back to life here. So only one kill for Millennium. Also lost the dragon. And this was all set up by Selfie. Walking by the ward, waiting in the bush then. Kerb and Connex thinking, okay, he's out of position now. He doesn't know we had a ward and we're going to jump him. And then you also see one of the reasons you built AP on Elise early on. Because the burst you can do at this point is so, so strong. So two fights down for Millennium. And they find themselves 6-1. Worse off and 5,000 gold just 12 minutes into this one. It's in danger of spiraling out of control. And as a Cassidy, when you fall behind, although he is still 1 0, it's not easy to get back in towards it, especially when the rest of the Super Hot crew are building basically to beat you, to take yeah. you down. Spirit Massage already completed for Mima is going to be very hard to deal with as this game develops. And also remember, Creaton is the only real wave clear from Millennium here. Jerry can't do anything to the waves. Kevin, at the same time, will have to stand under it. They're actually going for Mimer here. He's uh, pretty safe, the headbutt Q. Q headbutt. Actually failed from, uh, from Kevin there. But again, there's no uh, real wave clear except for Creaton on the side of, uh, of Millennium. So it means... Subaku can very early on start pushing off to the tower because Kreaton is running from the bottom lane. And some free poke on Kurt there as he catches that Dark Bind in. We saw this in the previous game of Dark Binds and Cocoons. You can find yourself some easy pick out targets. Kevin bounced on ultimate use from Mima, simply clearing out the wave and forcing him back while the rest of his team shove out and try and force this mid lane. Wave clear from Kreaton should be enough to keep it away. Smite even being used by Connex, desperate to keep this tower alive in the mid lane. And look at all the wards he also around the blue buff from Millennium. So Super Crew were basically just waiting it for waiting for it to spawn. They had already warded up everything around it. And now as soon as it started, Super Crew is moving in for the fight because they know they are so much stronger at the moment. So they just kept four members Ooh, around not gonna this work. tower here. Kissing just the black shield White. escapes. Yeah they focus on Kissing now. He's just like all right black shield that oh, here's, be here's the fight. Remember let's bounce not available for Mima. Mr. Rallis picked up early here. That's gonna be the soul shackles. Will it do enough? Great on focus on but now Kissing's in trouble. He's gonna get picked out around the side there. Kerf did go down to selfie but it is a double kill so far for Kraton. They can turn this fight on its head super hot group. This is dangerous restarting the blue buff. There's only 3v4 right now and that that is why they're backing away. And this is exactly why we love to see Jerry and Leona. He was the guy to set it up, landed everything onto Mr. Rallis. He was locked down the entire time and just ended up dying without being able to do anything. So nice little engage here from Jerry. 
onto the Super Hawk. We're just gonna see it again. It's all about Jiri here. Landing the ulti perfect onto Mr. Alice. Flashed on him as well. He's taking so much damage. Okay, so he walks around for like one second and then he just dies. He didn't hit anyone. Kazing coming in from, from the back of the Morgana here. Not exactly the best situation you want to be in. And actually end up dying as well. So trading two for one and also defending the blue buff. And remember, this was Super Hawk Crew who wanted to fight for this blue buff. They kept Millennium in the mid lane. Waited for it to spawn and then moved in all five members to take a fight. And if you think about it, that, it was Kasink out of position at the start. He used that black yeah, shield to true. prevent himself being CC'd. Do you mean it wasn't available for Mr. Rallis? Yes. That's a very good point, Lee. I know, right? Oh, it is. It was a good point. <laughs> so, Super Hot Crew. They have the advantage. Kevin unawares right now. Let's bounce goes off. Cocoon catches on towards him. Won't get a chance to use his ultimate because it's on a cooldown and a simple kill. It's a squishy cow when he's only got the beginnings, the makings of the Trinity Force, but not even close to completing it. And that is always the thing to remember with Valistar. Yes, he looks very tanky when his ult is up. When it's not, and he's building Trinity Force for his item, there's a lot of gold invested into damage and no tanky stats. So you can focus him down. Do it again. Mima will be able to pick up the tower here. So while they did lose the fight at the blue buff for Super Crew, getting a kill up in the top lane, getting the tower, keep the goal lead. And now, just waiting about 45 seconds for the next dragon to spawn. And we might see Super Crew once again move down. Mima already recalling from his top lane. Look to pick up uh, another dragon. And I wonder if Millennium wants to try and do anything. They do have the Corgi. Trinity Force completed with the two kills, so Crescent right now has hit his very strong point. And if he's left alone, he will be able to kill the members from Super Hawk Crew. But he's actually the only guy who's actually doing really well at this point. Well, that wave won't last long, Impaler will clear that up. 280 carries are down the bottom lane still. 2 on 4 for Mr. Wallace, Trinity Force complete. 2 0 0 for Creaton, getting that double in the last fight. Trinity Force also complete. So, equal power, just a door and shoot, uh, blade difference between the two. A lot of ages completed by both mid laners as well. Of course, along with that tier. But Mercury Tread's already picked up by Selfie, so... We're looking to get involved, and now we see Mima coming back. Source Boots picked up on that last back, as well as a Chain Vest, so... He is starting to become a bit of a problem. We wondered on this Zac. It's a long time since we've seen Zac in competitive play, honestly. So far, 2-0-4, spoken fantastically. It was actually also the champion one year ago, Mima used to play a lot. And then team started banning it and we had to go for Yorick. So good to see him back on the Zac. He's doing well on it, farming here, pushing down Kevin up in his top lane. Like we talked about in champs, like he could do. And also been able to get some early kills because it died from their lane swap at like level 4 down this bottom lane. And Subaru is setting up the dragon. Do have teleport on Mima, same goes for Kevin however. We can see both here. Kevin coming in from behind. Mima right in the middle of Millennium. Mima coming in. Let's bounce available. It's going to get straight on towards him. And he bounce he will do. Gets in towards. Does the damage. J. Reed taking a lot of damage down there. Connex drops. J. Reed drops. Curve's going to get focused on. He will go down. Kevin trying to get him towards Impaler. It will be a kill for Kreaton. But that is all that they will get. As Selfie gets himself the double. Now Kevin That's locked be up. An ace. Dark Binding. Ace for the Super Hot crew. And a fantastic fight. The teleport, Zach. Let's bounce on four members, completely call them off guard. Yeah, such a nice teleport. Kevin actually tried to teleport behind Subaru crew and surprised him. Let's see again, Mimo is already in the fight. He just teleported on the ward here, jumping onto Millennium, pick up the kills, and they just get the first two kills so fast. Now there's nothing else to do. Room prison from Ryze on the castle, and he won't be able to jump around. He goes down very fast. Crescent will be chased by Selfie. Another kill for him, and Mr. Riles as well will get a double kill down here onto Kevin. So. Nice engage with Teleport for Mimer. Another Dragon for Super Hawk Crew. And we have to remember, they are very, very far, very far ahead in gold. So looking very strong in these fights. Um, Risky Dragon, they yeah, don't have Smite. smite. Connex <laughs> does, he's gonna get caught down with the Dark Binding. They're gonna focus straight on towards him and he gets dropped. Now they can take the Dragon. And well, Millennium are just making mistake after mistake. Connex thought he could sneak in and quickly focus it down. Steal that Smite while Impaler wasn't there, but it's wasn't to be. It's one of those sacrifices as a jungler you just have to make. Yeah, especially because Impaler wasn't there, so actually smart by Super Crew to stop the dragon before it was too low, and just wait for Connex to jump in, kill him, and then they could take it without Impaler being there to smite it. But uh, I'm not even sure if Millennium can do at this point. They need to hope 
that Kirk can pick up a lot of kills on Kassan and start snowballing out of control. Otherwise, they are so far behind in goal at this point. Will actually get two towers now, so that's going to help. But still, Super Crew is definitely in the driving seat. So, the team fights go in Super Hot Crew's way. Millennium, can they maybe try and sneak a pick off here? Selfie getting pretty strong. You can see already is uh, Seraphs is well underway. 547 and 750 for him so far. So not long on that one, fully stacking itself out. Some magic resist being picked up by Kerb and the Negatron. Going for blue buff again. Subakuru wants to make sure Kerb cannot pick up this blue buff. Now they lost out this fight last time around. Let's see if it works out again. Solar Flare being used defensively from Jerry this time. Super crew in a much stronger position starting this fight out. Kraton not even close to being in the fight. Yeah, so should be blue buff now for Subakuru. This time around, do manage to take it, and Mr. Rallis is already in the mid lane to just clear the wave and make sure Millennium couldn't respond by pushing up to the tower here. But man, it's just been an uphill battle for Millennium pretty much since the start of the lane swap, where the dive down the bottom lane for Subaku after they took the dragon, nobody was there to contest it for Millennium, and then they just went down, picked up three kills in the bottom lane before minute five, I believe it was, and just got so far ahead, even got the tower as well. Oh. Chain CC once again, causing problems, gets themselves possibly the objective on this one. Wave will get cleared. Connex just about not getting caught in that cocoon. Very, very tight for him though. And Super Hot Crew, honestly, they seem to be out of siege this one down. Kurt was down the bottom trying to get the split push going, but I'm not sure they have the wave clear potential right now to keep Super Hot Crew away. Well, that's the thing. You see Super Hot Crew always get a few hits on the tower and always get a chance to land a binding on cocoon because the wave is not being cleared fast enough which makes it even harder for Millennium Tech to sit here and defend it. So, they're going to rotate top. They have Mima pushing the wave in. Everybody in there, and they're going to get some damage down on this before Millennium can respond. Finally going to get close, try and wipe that wave out. Now that the Force Force is starting to do some damage for Kerb, they are able to get some down, but again... Oh, tower's going to go down. Kevin caught out. They're going to go in this one. Solar Flare was used from J. Reed, trying to lock up the AD carry, but can they get the damage down or towards him? They will, just about. Mr. Rollins finally falls down, but they're going to turn it around. J. Reed taking low. Soul Shackles will ping off and take him down. Cocoon, Selfie's going to survive. Kerb couldn't get on him. Just gets chain locked up, and it's another double kill for Selfie. And it all starts with Subak, who is moving from the mid lane to the top side. There's a big wave, take down the tower, and then they get a 4 for 1 here. Even moving towards Baron now. Mr. Rallis is dead, however. He's going to be the main dealer, or damage dealer for it. But let's see, yeah. tower gone. Fight starts once against Cocoon Planet, the room presence, everything. Kerb at this moment is not strong enough to join in with Jerry and Kevin when they go towards the back line, which means he's actually forced to jump out of the fight first and then rejoin when it's too late. And we just also talked about how Rune Prison into Cocoon, into Binding. I mean, you're locked up for like six, seven seconds. And they could not take down the Baron, though. Kraton's presence comes in, takes down Kasing, and stops that dead in its track. So, small victory for Millennium. But with 11,000 gold differential, and that is what I call a small one. I don't think a single team fight won by them yet. It's a bit of an issue. Well, they did win the one at Dragon, two, uh, sorry, at the Blue Buff, two for one. But in the big. Team fights around the dragon or in the top lane here. They've just been so far behind in gold. Kassadin is not strong enough yet. Kreaton is doing really well. He's trying to do his best to carry Millennium through this mid game here. But he's just so hard because he's the only member with the kills. He's the only member with actually items here who can deal damage. Kevin did get his Trinity Force completed, but every time he goes in, he will maximum kill one member and then his ulti wears off and then we can actually see Subaku kill him. And Maimo just jumps towards Kreaton in these fights. He just jumps in his face, forces him to only hit him, and then it's a 4v4 with the remaining members, which goes completely in favor of Super Hawker at this point. It's one of those moments where everybody's complaining, why are you hitting the tank? Yeah. It's because it's the only big green gooey thing in my face right <laughs> it's now. It's plopping in my face. <laughs> So, I mean, you only need to really look at the kills and assists across the board for the Super Hawk crew and just see that the entire team is involved in these fights. It is very much a joint effort for everyone. Yeah, and we might see Millennium try and ward up their own jungle and hope someone from Super Hawk crew will be a bit overconfident, split up from the rest of the team. And then you do still have a lot of engage from Tereef, even from Codnex and Kevin, to catch out a member running alone. So if Super Hawk crew stops running as a group, it might open up for Millennium to get a few kills, get a few picks, and do actually what Subaku did to Millennium in game one, 
where it was Millennium who did really well in the early game with 4,000 gold ahead, and then they got caught out of position a few times. They can try and do the same here to Super Hot Crow. It's gonna be the way back into the game, and they need to get all the kills on like Kerb or Kraton here. Vision starting to be denied. Dragon up in 10 seconds. Super Hot Crew very much in solid position to take this one. As Millennium have no vision at all. They, they have a little bit of wards around the slight bush area, but that's about all they can go. They may try and still force a tower out of it, though. Could well push in towards that mid lane tower. They are. They're going to try and take it, but Super Hot Crew they need to be careful, are right? coming around the side. Yeah. Oh, Kerb just literally does nothing to Mima. He just laughs at him and actually bounces in his face. <laughs> and will probably heal all the damage he just took there from Kerb in just one blob on the floor, and then he's back to full HP again. But uh, Millennium may at least try to move up the mid lane once the Dragon, they knew but it was gone, so they at least tried to go for, for the mid tower, but they didn't have any minions, couldn't get it down in time, and then... But with the aggression of again. Kerb just showed, they just went, well, Kerb's not there, he can't force pulse the wave, so therefore there's no wave clearly left, and we're just going to go in and take a simple tower. I mean, that was just great reaction to Super Hot Crew. Millennium this time, they are going to try and force this mid lane tower. Can they yeah. do it? Super Hot Crew, they're closing the net. They're coming from every Look angle. Look at Mima here. Look at Mima, ready and waiting to elastic slingshot in. He has got less bounce available. Will he go for it? Hasn't got the flash. Kerb going to get focused on. Can he cocoon comes in. Has he nope. going to land the cocoon? Well, that doesn't land. He's got plenty available. Dark Binding not going to get fired off. Selfie looking to get on towards him. Use Ghost, actually, to try and track onto someone. Millennium, they get out alive. They are very close to getting caught every time they try and push this mid turret. And it's only Kreaton who can actually hit the tower. The rest of the members from Millennium all melee range, so they have to get into actually stand under the tower, which is so risky against all these, uh, all the engagement potential from Super Crew, and also because they have no wards on the side, because they are so far behind. They can never really safe, safely say, okay, now we have the time to go and hit the tower because Super Crew is always nearby and can engage onto them. So. As we talked about in Champ Select, Millennium have to just get some kills, have to snowball the early game here. Otherwise, Subaku will be stronger in the fights and also outscale them. And obviously, there's no siege potential either because you only have the Corky to, to hit the tower. It's always so disheartening when you walk up and do a force pulse and you, you see about two hit points move off the target. And you're just like, well, that didn't do anything, did it? Let's see how Mima builds because he completed that some fire game. He's gone haunting guys. Wow. So, okay, it's time to get some damage down on that bounce potential of the blob. Of course, the AD carries, you can see they picked up the Blade of King versus Infinity Edge for Creaton. The Pistol Scepter has now been completed by Kerb, so we'll see how that helps him. But while he's done that, Selfie, he's just gone back to get a bunch of his Veil. Yeah, and what we see from Super Hawker here is they don't really have to run down and just instantly push a tower. They don't have to use the lead they have at the moment to apply a lot of pressure because they can safely sit back and farm and just get even stronger the further the game goes. So we just see them sit in the lanes at the moment, farm, and whenever they can get a dragon or a tower, they walk down, take it, and then they just go back here. And if Millennium actually do move forward, they will, of course, look to engage onto them. Otherwise, we've just seen them sit back, wait for a few key items. Banshees, of course, as you just talked about for selfie. Mime as well getting some damage, getting some magic penetration up in the top lane. And at some point, they're going to say, okay, now we really feel we are strong enough. Let's just go for this fight here. Let's tower dive in with my Moro and Taylor first. Well, they've f completely invaded the uh, Millennium jungle. Moving around there, Millennium dare not go near it. Kevin's the only person that tends to tentatively step in towards the jungle. Kerb is desperately trying to split push and shove that wave out while by himself and his team some time. But Cocoon lands on Kreaton. That is not what you need. Does manage to get the flash out before the second chain managed to land on towards him but with the ad carry that low the minion wave now coming in this tower will fall well kerb did actually just start slow pushing the top lane and then he walks down to this bottom lane now but as you just said kreaton is gone he's the only wave player from millennium so this tower is gone as well and at the moment subaku can just move into these towers get a few hits step away if they'd ever feel there's a chance of losing a team fight they can just disengage and go back to base, then come down and do the same again. Well, they oh, had a pretty big wave there, but they did clear it out. Quick force pulse and uh, phosphorus bomb from Creaton did enough to wipe out the minion wave. Super Hot Crew will happily buy themselves a little time, step away from this one. They've got a minute and a half on Dragon. They could even 
maybe try and draw them to Baron now with Easily. no wave available. And that's what's obviously going through Millennium's mind is, are we going to catch on towards it? Look at mine. Interrupted on the Elastic Slingshot. Maybe trying to bait it out. Maybe trying to draw on towards Millennium and get some damage down on towards him. It's simple wave clear. And you can see peeling off at the back is Impaler and Mr. Raal as well. The rest of the Super Art crew keep them busy in the mid lane. And you just move in your Blader, the Druin King, Hyper Carry, percent magic damage onto the Baron. Should go down very fast and Millennium won't be able to react in time unless they're running in right now and they are actually going in here to try and stop it. Let's see if we can get a steal. Nope, Not the Baron's time. down, they peel off the side there. Elastic Slingshot from Mima didn't quite catch on towards Cotton X. He had to flash away across towards the blue buff, but Baron picked up by the two part crew. So got the Baron now, can go back to pushing down these towers, don't have to actually split up. They can send Mima in one lane and keep the rest of the members in like the mid lane and just push down two lanes at once because Mima is so strong in a one-on-one -on -one at the moment. They can also just go five members to the mid lane, to the bottom lane, whatever they decide and actually dive onto Millennium or just force down the tower. Always get a few hits, wait a few, few seconds for the next wave, land a binding, land a cocoon, and then you just go in straight in for the dive here, which is what Supoku can do. They have multiple options. They're so far hitting gold, and now they just need to use it. No reason for Supoku to take the chance and go really late game here, because you never really, even though they will outscale, you can always make a mistake in the late game, end up losing a team fight, and then all of a sudden the other team comes back and maybe even finish the game. So no reason for Super Crew to delay the game too much. And now they do have the lead, they do have all the items they need. Well, with a little bit of poke, Neandris picked up by both Mima and Impaler. They can just keep forcing them in. Mima down the bottom, split pushing, still yet to die. Has been forced into his passive twice, but nobody from Millennium has been able to finish him off. He's just going to carry on shoving that bottom wave while the rest of his team rotate take down the dragon and impaler actually split pushing on the top wave as well forcing that one down but be careful it's just going to take away the white while the rest of his team focus towards this bottom lane he will get spotted out by the ward so i don't think there's too much danger for him of getting spotted out. you can see good ward coverage from millennium actually defensively but that is about as far as they can go, where that ward line pretty much stands. Yeah, and seeing as they're standing in the base, they don't have any pick potential, even though they have some good wards down. So if someone like Mr. Rallis was walking all alone, they weren't in a position to jump him anyway. He did, however, just stay with the rest of the team. So Subar Crew running in as a unit, looking to land one of the bindings of cocoons and potentially die, but otherwise just take it down the tower. Well. They need to be with the wave, however. Now they're kind of losing out on it because it keeps getting to the tower before they arrive and get cleared. Kind of need someone to start taking the hits of this tower. Mima would be the prime target, so Mr. Rollins can get some of that long-range poke. He's shredding down the tower every time he gets onto it, but right now from Super Crew, nobody's willing to be that man to take the first initial hit, despite the tankiness available to them. They're just going to hold this one out. Baron Buff, of course, is on them, so health regen would be a thing. Selfie tries to go in. He catches on towards Kurt. Put some damage down. Selfie's going to get focused on here. Solar Flare, but the headbutt, uh, sorry, the kick coming out of Cortnex is not enough. Kevin goes in, tries to pulverize on towards him, just doesn't have the damage. Selfie burning down. He will finally drop to the Ignite, but it's a futile task, honestly. It's a one for one so far. Kerb just off on the side, wants to try and get some poke, but the inhibitor will fall on the Super Hot Crew. It's going to move up to this mid wave that's clawing its way down. No, they're going to turn around. That binding catch on Jerry. He's in trouble. Not going to be able to get out of this one. Quick elastic slinch up from Mima. Bounces him up. And they lock up another target. And Subaku don't, don't even mind losing selfie. It was all about just getting the tower down, get the inhibitor, start getting the super minions to walk in the base of Millennium. And they can go back now, use the goal they have, start doing the exact same thing on the top lane or the mid lane, and push it down. Millennium here might respond and actually get a tower in the mid lane. Much needed goal. They will be able to get this one here. Take it down. So, uh, third tower of the game for Millennium. 34 minutes in. Took them a while, but it's something's better than nothing. They're going to try and keep pushing on this one until Super Hot Crew respond. That's going to be a pretty quick reaction. They're going to chase. Oh, teleport from Mima. Tries to catch on towards Kreaton. He has got. Flash available if he wants to continue pouncing on towards him. There's the scrying orb to give vision. They're going to pursue flash for flash. Kraton gets away, but that is an important flash burn. Rather have that taken off your AD carry than your top laner. 
100% agree. They can just jump onto him now, make it even harder for him to actually clear the waves. But Subakuru back down towards his mid lane. Don't want to waste any more time. Just want to get this base down, win the game, get to zero, and look very good going into the third game. Well, Kevin's going to try and come in there. Connex, everything they can do to clear the wave. Kerb tries to get look in. He gets quickly locked up. Mr. Ral is free hitting that turret while everybody else was left trying to deal with the minion wave. Super Hot Crew, just a matter of time, a matter of waves. Super Minions pushing down the bottom wave. They're on towards the Nexus turrets right now. Mr. Ral is ready and waiting to start barraging that tower as he, as soon as they step in, the wave comes in. The second inhibitor turret falls and the inhibitor may well follow. Super Minions in there. They're going to lock onto Connex, taken very low from this one. Mima goes straight in towards it. Jay Re locked up on the side there. Soul Shackles will ping off on towards Kevin. He's going to get locked down as well. It's a two for zero so far as Super Hoku continues to push. Kerp has to flash away from this one, tries to get out of the base. Super Hot Crew pretty low on hit points, but again, they are all in full control. Remember that Baron buff on them is just finally worn off. That's going to be the Nexus turrets going down. The second one should fall. They have the Super Minions there. Not enough damage from Millennium to prevent this one. It's going to be an easy 2-0 lead for the Super Hot Crew. They will finally close it out. They're going to get themselves some padded statistics. Remember, Fancy has finished, guys. Let's just finish the game. 23-7 overall and 36 minutes. Easy victory. And just completely outplayed and outpicked Millennium in this game here. Millennium got the lane swap. They were actually the ones to start the lane swap. Then they didn't defend the dragon, it went down. Then down the bottom lane, three members died from Millennium to the tower dive from Super Hot Crew at like minute four, minute five. And then as soon as you fell behind with the comp Millennium had, there was just nothing they could do against Super Hot Crew. So completely outpicked, outplayed in the early game, and then it was just a matter of time before Super Hot Crew actually managed to push in the base and finish the game here. So back to uh, blue side for Super Hot Crew. Could be fairly happy mm. because the comp they had in uh, game one was just as good as the, the one they have here. Alistar was the first pick. Remember, Alistar was first picked by Kevin this game. He died six times, didn't pick up a kill, and had zero impact. And this all heads back to the very start. They went for the 4 0 split. Yeah, yeah, but they exactly. caught them out down the bottom, and there was just slow Still reactions there. from Millennium. Got multiple kills. I think we saw Mima come back to Lane. He only got like two, three CES, but he got 1 0 2. He got going already. And he was way ahead of Kevin, and Kevin was never going to win it, but it won't be won then. No, that's the thing. Again, if you're behind from minute four, at least a thousand gold or more, and you again, you have to make the picks, you don't have proper wave clear, you only have one champ to wave clear, you're going to get outscaled. It's just instantly you realize after like five, six minutes, okay, we now have to make some risky plays. We have to try and go for whatever engage we can find. They did get one of the blue buff, but it got the two kills. So that was a good engage by Jiri, and Millennium picked up two kills, defended the blue buff. And then they tried to go for the dragon fight, lost it, got aced, killed one member, I believe, from Super Hot Crew. And from there on out, they were like six, seven thousand gold behind. Mm. It was a. They kind of realized, okay, now we have hit the point where we just have to sit and wait and try and catch them by surprise. One way traffic. The only victory was simply the blue buff for Millennium. Yeah. So, Super Hot Crew overall, they've gone with two solid team fighting compositions in these last two fights and what did we say against SK that they did against yeah. Millennium? Team fighting composition. Millennium exactly. simply do not know how to deal with it. They try and get the picks, they're not available and then they just come up short. And it's one of the reasons going into the playoffs, I was looking at Millennium as a team and the games they've played in the regular season and I was like, best out of five. I don't see Millennium being a very, very strong team because they have this one play style which you see completely countered, especially also with Morgana picks coming in from Kaseng here, and build these team fight comps, which means if Millennium don't completely snowball the game, they fall so far behind, they can't do anything to come back. And it's what SK Gaming did against Millennium in all the games, and it was the same deal as here. Super Cruise done it now twice, same deal. So Millennium need for the next game, either to play completely out of their mind, get a pick comp and just completely snowball it, or actually try and take a team fighting comp. Well, well, see how it works out. They need to start getting that lane phase going, that's for sure. Picks and bans could be an important factor. For now, though, we're going to head over to Shox for a closer look at Super Hot Crew's second win in a row. Thank you very much, D-Man. And well, uh, Young Buck, you said it as well. They need to go pick some stronger champions. And Trevor said, you know, if they're going to keep playing that, that pick up, it might not work out. Did you see anything that you found better than in the last draft from Millennium, or was it the same story over again? 
Well, this time they at least got the Eldest Star, however, Super Hot Crew shows exactly how you play purple. You give a champ, uh, the blue side one strong champion, and you just change it for two very strong champions. In this case, it was Kokmo and Morgana, two champions that are their best at their own roles, and from there on, the trade was so good that they could win the game from that alone. Yeah, I just feel the Kassadin for Kerp is not his champion. I believe that's the second time we've seen him running it, second time he's lost with it, and I just don't... I don't see the same level of impact on Cassidy with that player in contrast to many others. I think the zillion ban that Super Hot Crew are putting in both of the games is very, very important because it fits Millennium's playstyle, it suits the way they want to play. And as soon as you take that off the table, Kerb is really struggling to find something relevant in 4.13. Yeah, it kind of uh, makes me think of more of a, a cast and curse because lately when we've seen a pick, it's been more to bring out a strategy and pick and pick some other things uh, coming in for them as well. Um, Young Buck, Zach coming in here. We haven't seen him in a while. And uh, you were actually saying that you talked to Mimer about that pick and that he had it in his head to play it out. Yeah, last night he wanted to train against me and he said, I want to play Zach into Elastar. So I was like, okay, let's bring it. And it did work for him. I think that in general you beat Alistar by picking something that doesn't have mana and has sustain. So Zack is definitely a great champion. Munda will also work. And you just saw how much Mimer brought to the team fights. Yeah, and then going in this game, Super Hot Crew clearly off a confidence boost after that game one because they just went very hard in the beginning with that perfectly executed dive bottom lane. And Impaler, who was lacking, let's say, uh, in the games in the playoffs here, he did step it up. Oh, yes, I agree. I definitely think Impaler has found some comfort on Elise, uh, doing very well in both of the games that he's played. And I, you are right, Impaler really struggled in the quarterfinals, but the whole team really struggled. I think everybody stepped up. This game was a slow strength. I mean, Super Hot Crew got ahead, and they just very, very slowly crept and strangled the life out of Millennium. From very early on in the game, it was clear that Super Hot Crew was executing better, was playing their comp effectively, and there was very little chance for Millennium actually to come back into it. Yeah, let's actually take a look at a team fight where Super Hot Crew played out their comp. Let's get that up on the screen. So it is fairly early on into the game, but I really just want to highlight how far ahead Super Hot Crew are at this point. They've got a tower, they've got nearly 3,000 gold lead, they're already three kills to zero. Roll the clip out, and you'll notice Selfie, we don't know if this was bait or if this was him out of position, but as the top laners are about to teleport in here, Young Buck, what was your take on this engage and everybody getting thrown in? Well, the biggest thing is that Millennium was expecting a two versus one on the rise. However, Impaler was ready to react to that and they immediately took out the Lee Sin. From there on, it's a five versus four and they just take it from there. Yeah, I really like the way Mr. Rawls also lands all of his living artilleries. Super hot crew just surround Millennium. And Kev, uh, uh, Mimer rather even gets away with his life thanks to that passive. So just really strong game. It also led to the Dragon a few seconds later. So what was nearly a 3,000 gold lead became about a 4,500 gold lead at 10 minutes on the clock. Yeah, very impressive. And what we always say of the Super Hot Crew is once they get rolling, they can go, they can become this very good team because their skill ceiling is very high. So on the side of Millennium, you already said, maybe they just have to try something different. They didn't. Stalling strategy, maybe? I kind of feel like Millennium are not really on the same page <clears throat> when it comes to understanding the patch and the playstyle. Uh, yes, they got the Alistair top lane, but it didn't really work out for them. The Cassidy and Corky combo. Cassidy is like super mid to late game. Corky is like early to mid game. Alistair needs to get Trinity Force and tank items. It, it just kind of felt like the comp was a little disjointed. And Millennium are really struggling in the series. Hey, what are your thoughts? I would like to see uh, Millennium copy Super Hot Crew's pick face. The, just give away the Alistar, change it for uh, trade it for Kogmo and Morgana, and I would also like to see the Mundo band changed into an Elise band because Impaler has been really strong on it, and they seem to really like the long, uh, catchy champions, long range. I I, I want to ask a quick question. As somebody who's been on a stage like this in similar situations, if you're zero two down, what's the mindset like in Millennium's head? It can be very difficult to deal with, especially after such a devastating loss. The first game, you could say, okay, guys, we just barely lost. It was still a close game. We can come back. But after a game like this, uh, it takes a lot of hearts to come back. Well, they have come back before, so we will see what they can do. We need to step off the rift, but we'll be back for game three of the series in a few minutes. Don't touch that back button. He's only on half the hit points. He will get less bounce off. Kevin gonna get caught around. Paul Royce was used. Kirk oh, escaped this one. Nice Mr. Rollins gets him down. Jay Reed taking a lot of damage down there. Connex drops. Jay Reed drops. 
Kurt's gonna get focused on, he will go down. Kevin trying to get it towards Impaler, it will be a kill for Kreaton, but that is all that they will get. They will just about. Mr. Rollins finally falls down, but they're gonna turn it around. Jay Reed taking low, Soul Shackles will ping off and take him down. Cocoon, Selfie's gonna survive!